Hi there, I thought I'd do a quick video showing how I solder music wire to make landing gear for my radio control planes. Whether you're working from plans like these, or you're scratch building, or repairing an old kit, you often come up against a situation where you need to do some kind of soldering. And I know that this is something that a lot of people find quite difficult or problematic. So I thought I'd show you the techniques that I use. So what works for me basically? Right, well let's have a look at the, the materials and the equipment we're gonna be using. I've got a, a small blow lamp. This is excellent, really, really nice. It's easily controllable, lovely flame. You can alter the size of the flame easily with your thumb like that. You can just plonk it on the table in the knowledge that it's not going to fall over. I have a much bigger blow lamp which I use for plumbing around the house but it's really fierce, you can't just put it on the bench like that without worrying it's going to tip over. This is lovely and I'll provide a link in the description below to that blow lamp. Well this is the flux that I'm using, it's a non-acid flux and I actually got it for doing cold water plumbing at home but it's a great flux but it is really strong so when we're finished with it it's best to give it a really the, the item a really good clean by dunking it in some hot soapy water and giving it a scrub with a toothbrush and, and drying it properly afterwards and I'm using this silver solder which I don't know the composition of it's just a basic silver solder which I've had for quite a few years um, so I, I, I can't tell you the composition but any silver solver will be fine I'm sure. Now we've got the music wire and I'm just going to mock up a kind of a joint you would do in a, uh, in, in a landing gear for a plane. So I'm going to solder that onto there like that. So first thing we need to do is to clean up the surfaces that we're going to solder. So I'm just going to get some sandpaper and I'm just going to give that end a good clean and we want to get it nice and bright because one of the keys to good soldering is uh, getting it clean and bright so there's no dirt or oxidization on it. So that's nice and clean now and the bit we're going to glue onto there, uh, sorry solder onto there, we'll uh, give a good clean as well. Now another key to good soldering is having the item that you're soldering whether it's landing gear or it's electrical wire having it held nice and secure there's nothing worse than trying to solder something that's moving about like this it's just so frustrating and you usually end up with a terrible job so we just want to make sure that once we've got it heated up we can actually put the solder on it without it sliding around so what we're going to do so I'm just going to weight that down. I mean if this was proper landing gear we'd need to find a perhaps a better way of holding it but this is just an example showing how I'm going to be doing the soldering. So we'll do this piece first and what we're going to do we're not going to try to solder this straight away what we're going to do is we're going to tin the areas that we eventually want to solder together and by tinning what I mean is we're just going to give them a thin coat all around that area to be joined a thin coat of solder and to do that we're going to get our flux and we're just going to coat that area now the flux will help clean it even more but it will also help it to stay clean while we apply the heat because metals do very rapidly start to oxidize when they and get dirty as we get uh, heat on them. It might be that I add a little bit more flux during the soldering process but we'll we'll see how that goes. So we've got that fluxed, we've got our silver solder and we've got our blow lamp. Now the next thing we need to be careful and I think this is really key to doing soldering joints is to not get it too hot. It needs to be just hot enough that we can put on the solder and spread it around on the area to be joined. If we get it too hot it's going to go black, it's going to oxidize and the solder is just going to run off. 
I mean, we might find this will oxidise anyway a little bit and I may add a little bit more flux. But I will tin this one and I'll just zoom the camera in so you can see that a little bit closer. And just, there we go. So, we'll just get a bit of heat on it. Like I say, we don't want to get this too hot. It wants to be as little heat as possible to do the job that we, that we need to do. Just move this around so it doesn't... Uh... And I'm just going to slide the uh, solder up and down. There we go. Now we can see that has been tinned. And we'll do the undersurface as well. If excess solder falls off, that's absolutely no problem at all. The main thing is to just get this tinned. I think I've had a little bit too much coffee this morning. My hands are a little bit shaky. But that now is looking great. So we'll put a little bit more uh, flux on that to clean that up. And we've now got that tinned and it's coated with the solder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this other piece and then I'll show you how we join them together. Right, well I've got both of these tinned now and you can see that's got a good coating of solder all the way around and we're going to solder them together. Now if we look at this, it, they don't go together perfectly because there's a little bit of a, a lump of solder just on that uh, on that side there. Now if that's the case we can just get a sharp knife and we can just cut that off a little bit or just just shave it off because it's it's fairly soft soft, so, soft stuff solder. So now that will go together much better and create a better joint. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bind these together with actually I might just take a little bit off that as well just there. Yeah, I mean you could sand it or file it. I don't like using files because it clogs up. But that goes together now and will create a nice joint. So we've got some copper wire. Now this is 0.6 mil copper wire. And I'm going to cut that. So we've got a decent length of copper wire. And what we're going to do is we're going to bind this and make sure that it, the joint is held nice and tightly together. And to bind it, I'm just going to start by getting it in the right place, the right orientation, and then I am going to wrap this around. And in wrapping it around, we need to make sure that we get the wrapping as tight and as neat as possible. So we can stop halfway and just push it down with our th uh, nail just to make sure it's nice and tight together. So I will keep wrapping all of this. Okay, we now have that nicely wrapped, bound, and what I'm going to do is just trim off this edge and, uh, and bring it down. There we go, and we'll just flatten that down, and now we have our nice joint ready to be soldered, and we can make sure this is in the right orientation that we need for our landing gear. So again, we need to make sure that we hold this nice and firm. However you do that will depend on the shape of your landing gear. And we will now give that a nice coat of flux again. Keep it nice and clean while we're doing this. Now we don't want to be careful not to put too much uh, flux, uh, not flux, uh, solder on this when we're doing it because we just want to uh, saturate really the, the windings and the solder will go through and the solder will melt on the music wire and it will all become nice and one and a strong joint. 
So we shouldn't need to turn this over, it should just flow around the whole joint. So now we've got that done, again we get the blow lamp and we just heat this up as little as possible to get that joint done. I'll just zoom in again. Right, so let's get this done. Again, just as much heat as we need, no more. There we go. We'll just let that cool for a second. Right, well, there we have our soldered joint. And it looks a bit mucky, a bit dirty at the moment, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and put this in the sink, give it a scrub, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at it. Right, well I've just cleaned that up now in the sink. That's all I've done is just put it in some hot water and scrubbed it. With, uh, with a toothbrush. And you can see that that has come up really nice. But there's one last thing to do, and that is to get some wire wool and just to give it a good clean up like that. Now, if there's any big bits of solder, any that's sticking out either from the, uh, the bit you've bound, or like here, there's a little bit of solder there that perhaps would look a little bit neater if it wasn't there it will just come off with a knife like that and we can just clean it up a little bit. You know, these things are never perfect. There's always going to be a little bit of uh, solder that's strayed from the joint, which is fine. But we can clean this up really nice now with a bit of, uh, with a bit of wire wool and uh, we'll end up with a nice, clean looking joint. But there you go, that's, that's kind of how I do the joints for my uh, for my landing gear anyway. Well that's how I solder up the joints on my landing gear and I could say it's as easy as that but actually soldering music wire isn't easy and it does take a little bit of practice just to get those areas tinned right at the beginning and as I said I think the key to getting it right is the correct heat not too hot getting it nice and clean with the flux and getting a good uh, solder a good silver solder and you do produce some good results but it does take a little bit of time and practice to get it right or it did for me anyway I certainly didn't get joints looking like this when I first started I had some horrible uh, horrible examples so anyway I hope you found that useful and um, Hope it'll help you building those planes and getting them rolling down the runway. So anyway, thanks very much for watching.